Hey guys, so today what we're going to get into are the rest of the European nations that are going to be spreading around. We had Spain, we had Portugal, and uh, let's talk about the other ones here. Okay, so we're going to start off with the French. Now the French are going to be a little bit different. The Spanish and the English and even the Dutch, a lot of them, they're, they're going to like settle, and the French aren't about that as much. So in the New World, the French are really going to be looking at setting up like trading posts and places where they can remove resources and, and stuff like that. Now, uh, one of the first guys to get involved is Jacques Cartier. You see him, he, his stuff is up here. Um, looking for part of what they were trying to do, part of the Northwest Passage, because they thought the idea of the Northwest Passage was that you could sail up around the Arctic and you could sail all the way around. You can't. But uh, Cartier is going to get involved up there. You're going to have Samuel de Champlain, which will also for, you know, uh, around the Great Lakes and Lake Champlain itself. Um, Canada into New York and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have Louis jo Jolet and Jacques Marquette. Um, you're going to see these guys are going to be able to go all the way into the Great Lakes, work their way down the Mississippi. Uh, these two guys will also go around and get to help New Orleans. Um, La Salle will do just about all the Great Lakes, and he'll explain all the way down into New Orleans as well. And so the idea here is that they are really looking to set up a trade empire. They're trying to look at kind of the approach that the British took. Um, and in general, they had a pretty good relationship with the natives. They would fight the natives sometimes, don't get me wrong, but in general, it wasn't too bad. They also will get involved in Southeast Asia. Now, this is a map from 1895, and that's okay. This just gives you an idea of where they're going to be at. Um, they're going to have a relatively small presence in India, a, a couple cities they'll be involved in, but they're not really going to stay there that long. They're going to be more involved in Southeast Asia, which is really important because, you know, goods from China have to go through here to get over to here. So areas modern-day Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia will all be under control of the French. And we will talk about it a little bit later. They're not particularly nice there. They will dominate most of this stuff fairly brutally. But again, they are not looking to live there. Okay, you will get some French that settle in Canada. So modern day, the cities, they will found the cities of Quebec and Montreal, or Montreal. And you have the French Canadians today, the Quebecois, that still, of course, live there. The English are also going to get very involved. Uh, probably the first big guy out is Sir Francis Drake, as you see Drake right there. Right? Is it funny? It's got to be a little funny, right? A little fun? No, all right, whatever, fine. There is Sir Francis Drake, actually. Um, he was the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. He will also um, explore a lot of the modern-day United States into South America. He is also a pirate. Why is he a pirate? Well, he will attack Spanish shipping pretty much all the time. Uh, the Spanish hate him, um, and rightfully so. He would actually um, die while at sea. He wasn't lost. He actually would um, die of dysentery, which kills millions of people all over the world at this time. Um, disease always gets in the way. Um, but nonetheless, he will really help uh, England's exploration efforts as well as starting to get into Asia a little bit. Sir Walter Raleigh is going to be the big one about trying to colonize. Um, Sir Walter Raleigh will get the license to start colonies in Virginia. The first main one he had was Roanoke, and we know that, of course, was a failure with the famous Lost Colony. He will also try to get more involved um, in coastal uh, Virginia, as well as going down into modern-day North Carolina. Um, 
and and most of the the east you know the southern part of the east coast um he will also be very aggressive against the spanish um eventually he does get executed by king james the first mainly because in order to calm things down with the spanish um the english made a treaty with spain raleigh violated that treaty and thus was executed so that wasn't good you also have henry hudson who gets very involved with um with North America in New York, Hudson Bay, Hudson River, of course, are named after him. However, he died when he was there was a mutiny amongst his troop, and he was actually put like on a boat and sent out to sail in the middle of nowhere. But the English are going to be different because they are going to focus on settling and colonizing. Okay, yes, you also have the Massachusetts Bay Colony, which I mentioned before. We'll get into that more later. But the English are really here to to stay. And I find it interesting that both of these men looks like the six figure man from the Princess Bride. Um, England will also move into India. This is going to be really important. They start with some trading posts, just like the Portuguese. Um, they actually fight the French here and lose early. They lose the, the port of Madras. Eventually, they are going to start to, to do a series of wars. First, they fight the Mughal Empire in India, and they're able to take over Calcutta. And then eventually, a group known as the Marathas are able to overthrow the Mughals, and the British fight a series of wars with the Marathas until they eventually conquer India, which is actually modern-day India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. It's pretty impressive. Um, but interestingly enough, this, has, this plays a role in the American Revolution, which I'll talk about later, because the first Maratha War also started in 1776. The most important of all the English explorers, however, is Captain Cook. I mean, if you look at this here, I mean, it's insane what this guy does, okay? And yes, I know we're getting into a time period later, but I like to kind of get it all going now. Um, this guy, I mean, he circumnavigated the globe. He actually was able to see Antarctica. He's the first ever, his voyage was the first ever group of Europeans actually ever in the world to get there. He is able to um, discover Australia and New Zealand and Tonga and a lot of southern islands, called, you know, Tahiti and places like that. He also um, looks at much of northern Pacific in the, the west coast of the United States and Canada and Alaska. He sees all the way up there. But what was so crucial about um, and Hawaii, which sadly is where he will die, um, a dispute with some natives that he was probably trying to take advantage of, and it didn't work out real well for him. We'll talk about it in class. But Cook is the guy that none of you ever hear of, and I don't ever really know why, because every single area that he went to, he brought naturalists and academics to catalog and talk about different types of life and um, the people. So he basically did like anthropological studies of everywhere that he went, and it was really, really influential. We'll get into it even more when we're in class. The Dutch, okay, here's the deal. The Dutch, it's a small nation, right? The only area they're really going to um, populate is South Africa, the, the country of South Africa. But they're going to get pushed out by the English. In the New World, they actually get over here and settle in New York and New Jersey. It's actually the famous Dutch explorer Peter Minuet who famously was able to buy the island of Manhattan for like $13. Um, but most of their focus is going to be in Indonesia. Okay, um, and here they're actually going to go after the Dutch. So we have southern India. You see how they're, they're in these areas here. They will eventually take over Malacca. You have um, Java, the islands of Java and Sumatra. They're going to be big, but the cities of Malacca uh, and uh, Ambonia and Jakarta. Eventually, they will be the only European nation allowed in Japan, up here in the port of Dashima. But they are going to be remarkable. We're going to watch something very sp specific on the Dutch East India Company. You're going to see what the Dutch are able to do because they're going to be much, much different. It's not as much the Dutch are going to be doing this for the government or the country of the Netherlands. Rather, more of this is going to be under their trading companies, the most notable being known as the VOC. And as I said, we'll, we'll get to that.
And finally, I want to talk about Russia. Russia would get involved too. Um, Vitus Bering, as you can see here, he had two large expeditions um, looking all the way over into Alaska, which they will eventually claim as well. Remember, we had to buy Alaska from Russia as well, going all the way into the Bering Strait. Um, and because of that, the Russians are going to start to push out, and this is what eventually will allow them to conquer all of Siberia, as well as the northern part of Russia. And every nation is getting involved in this, and it's going to bring, It's again, it's all about bringing them money, bringing them prestige, although sometimes it's going to make these nations fight. We're going to talk about the Seven Years' War a little bit later, but this is the big boom and these nations, as a result, will see huge economic gains, which will then allow them to dominate the world. All right, make sure you finish up your assignment, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.